All right guys, so today I'm gonna to be bringing you my Cupid deck profile, but I'd want to actually point out that these are, in my opinion, the three main, the three main monsters you'd want to see, um, you'd want to use in the deck, obviously. Um, the reason why I put Crimson Nova, uh, the Cupid Lord, in this part is, it is hard to get out on the field because you need three Crimson Nova, the Cupid Lords, in your hand to fusion summon with it. But if you do manage to get this guy out, he does do um, a lot of a significant amount of life point damage to your opponent. I believe he halves your opponent's life. Yes, basically he does. He does. Um, you know, in a sense, he does something similar to the new Time Lord card that halves your opponent's life. But the difference here is that this guy is really hard to get out on the field, and these three main, uh, three these three cubic cards here are. Basically, the main point of the cubic deck, I did throw in a couple other random cards in here to make it a bit more, not consistent, but a bit more, uh, what's the word? In a sense, a bit more playable. The cubics are more of a fun deck. They're not overall competitive, but they are something to shock your opponent with. But um, other than that, let's get started into the deck profile. All right, so first off, the foolish barrier of the deck being Dooza. Basically, if this guy's normal summon a special summon, you can send a cubic card from your deck to uh, from your deck to your grave, and that's really beneficial for the cubic deck because what they want is the majority of the spelling traps do want to be in the grave to banish and either add a cubic uh, monster from their deck to, uh, from the deck to your hand or source of summon them, but it has to be like a level four or lower. I'll get to those later in the video. Um, next is three V John and Cubic Seeds. Basically, if this guy uh, can't be destroyed by battle, and if this guy battles an opponent's monster, you can set this guy. Uh, you get um, set this guy in a spell and trap zone, uh, place a cubic counter on that monster. Uh, v John basically battled against a cubic counter, and basically monsters with cubic counters cannot attack, and they have their effects negated. And uh, I think during the end, yeah, uh, during the end phase, if I'm correct. Basically, if this effect was applied and it's still in the spell and trap zone, you could special summon it just like that. Uh, the next up is Crimson Nova. Basically, this guy's an easy special summon as long as you have three cubic cards with different names in your hand. And um, during the end phase, be, be, both players take 3,000 <laughs> damage to the life points, which is ridiculous, especially uh, if your opponent can't get over this thing. And the reason why they can't, the the reason why it'd be hard for them to get over it, is because it's unaffected by monster effects, um, whose attack is lower three thousand is three thousand or lower, and basically if this guy destroys an opponent's monster by battle, it can make a second attack during each battle phase. So if your opponent can't even get rid of this thing, obviously they could you, but if they can't get rid of it, and it's still on the field, either you're gonna lose the game or they're gonna lose the game by overall stalling, the. <laughs> Stalling the duel until either one of them loses life, either one of you loses life points. And the one ounce of the cubics is Indo Doom, Volt the Cubic Emperor, and uh, Buster, um, Buster Gundal the Cubic Behemoth. But you don't really use them for their effects, you just use them for names for Crimson Nova or just special some of them to go into the rank four plays. Uh, the monsters that are not cubics that I do run in this deck and I believe are pretty useful since this deck is mainly both dark and light attributes are two of the Black Luster Soldier Envoy at the beginning. Basically, you could either, you can activate one of these effects once per turn. You could either banish one of your opponent's monsters by targeting it, but in doing so, you sacrifice this guy's ability to attack that battle phase. Or, um... I think the second effect is just as useful. Basically, if it destroys the post monster by battle, you can attack it again during that battle phase. Like yeah, each battle phase, it does that effect. So pretty useful, to, and it's a 3000 beater. Easy to special summon with this deck. All light and dark attributes. I mean, you can't go wrong with two. Uh, and again, <laughs> two summoner monks, mainly for the rank four um, plays. Basically, while it's on the field, it can't be tributed, and you can basically pitch a spell from your hand to the grave, uh, from your hand to the grave, especially summon to level four from your deck. Uh, in defense position, it cannot attack, but that doesn't really matter since the 
since the main priority with Summon Monk is that you want to go into the rank 4 builds or Link Summon or whatever you guys feel is necessary. And the hand traps, effect Veiler, target an opponent's monster, uh, uh, negate their effects. <clears throat> Attend the end of the turn, during their turn obviously. Uh, Ghost Ogre, Snow Rabbit, mainly just to get rid of that one, uh, get rid of that one face of card on the field. Uh, basically just pop it. It doesn't negate, but it's just a good way to get rid of that one card you can't get rid of any other way. And finally for the level 7, <clears throat> level 7 Synchro Summons, I run the Destrudo Lost Dragon. Freeze, I can't pronounce that. Basically half your life points, special summon it from the hand or grave. But it obviously banishes itself, it banishes itself when it leaves the field. But pretty easy to get out. Just a hefty cost depending on where you are during the game. And if you have Crimson Nova, that's even more of a that's even more of a risky play. Considering if you do half your life during the beginning, you're at four thousand. But then Crimson Nova is like, all right, I'm gonna take three thousand. You're basically at one thousand at that point. So that's why you'd rather run this guy at one. He's not, he's not um really crucial. But if you go with the the um the black rose dragon and just blow out the field, hopefully you can rebuild your field by that <laughs> and just go from there. All right. So for the spells, you'd want to run three cupid karma mainly because they're named for crimson nova and what they do. Basically, you target a cupid monster you control. You send as many um vija uh, uh you send as many vija on the cubic seeds. From your hand or deck to the grave and that cubic monster gains 800 attack for each v jump sent <clears throat> from your hand or deck to the grave um it does have a secondary effect where if a v jump is special summoned in your opponent's turn you could send this card to the grave and basically have your opponent's life points but that's kind of tricky if you don't know how to get the v jumps out on the field during your opponent's turn but again like it's great and it's grave effect is you could banish it like, you can banish this card from your grave and then basically add a cubic monster from your deck to your hand. So if you're looking for that one cubic monster you need but don't have, obviously you could just in a way you could find a way to send this card from either your deck or hand to the grave, banish it, just search it from there. Alright, so the next cubic card you want to run is the cubic wave. <clears throat> basically what I love about this card is you can target a cubic monster you control and one face up monster your opponent controls. Double the attack of that one cubic monster you targeted and half the attack of the monster your opponent controls that you targeted. And if this card is in the grave, you could banish both this spell card and any number of cubic monsters in your grave. Target monsters your opponent controls equal to the number of cubic monsters you banished and basically place cubic counters on them. And basically cubic counters as a as I said, basically those monsters cannot attack and they cannot activate their effects as long as they have cubic card, um, cubic counters uh, placed on them. And for the draw cards, I run two alert. Basically, the majority of the deck is dark, <clears throat> so chances of you uh, um, you either banish one of the dark monsters you control or send your whole hand to the grave, which isn't which isn't bad either. Considering sometimes you do want all the card, all your dead spell and traps from your hand. Um, in your hand into the grave as fast as possible or you can use this card hand destruction again just pitch the um, spell and traps that you want in the grave most of the time and you know do the same to your opponent and if you get ash don't worry you don't get those two cards but you still got those um, combo play you got you still got those combo pieces that are in the grave you could just banish them and just go from there <laughs> Um card destruction again the majority of the cards, you want them in the grave, basically, especially the spell on traps, because that's the majority of the deck. And in case that doesn't work, you only have you always have foolish burial goods and one for one, either for V Jam, uh, either for V Jam or Effect Veiler. If you man, if you for some if for some reason you want to go for a synchro build, by all means, Effect Veiler and one for one, it's not bad in my opinion. Alright, so basically for the traps, you run two Unification of the Cubic Lords. Basically, this is your fusion summon. This is your fusion card for the three Crimson Novas to get into the big guy. I'll explain more later. But having three Crimson Novas, it's more of a luck at a draw kind of thing, or starting off with it to activate this card. 
during your opponent's turn or whatever. But basically, if it's in the grave, you can just banish it. Special summon, and it allows you to special summon a level four or lower cubic monster, ignoring its summoning conditions from your hand or deck. And the other car, the other traps are. It should be no surprise if your opponent gets gets rid of your field. They might attack blindly into these cards. So obviously, you know, two stubborn mirror force in case your opponent attacks directly, but you know, um, doesn't see it coming. One drowning mirror force in case they for some reason pop storming. Uh, one of my favorite cards to get rid of problematic monsters who have high attack. Punch in a box. Basically, your opponent must control two monsters. Obviously, this is worse for Sky Strikers because they only control one monster. But basically, if you control two monsters, basically, um, you could target the monster. You could target one of their attacking monsters, send one other monster they control to the grave, and that monster basically loses attack equal to the monster sent to the grave. And it's not a. It's not a once return thing. It's like. You know, once they lose an attack, it's kind of like a permanent thing until it leaves the field. And the final trap is Needle Bug Nest. Basically, send the top five cards from your deck to your grave. Hopefully, um, if you do activate this trap, hopefully you get all the spell and trap uh, cubic cards you need in the grave. Or the cubic cards that you need. Uh, to extend your plays, but other than that, those are the traps. Alright, so for the extra deck, we run the Crimson Nova Trinity. Basically, it requires two of the Crimson Nova Dark Cubic Lords as material, which is why you have the trap being the fusion trap of the deck. Um, basically, what it does is if it attacks, you have your opponent's life, and during this battle phase, when it's summoned, um, if it doesn't destroy your opponent's monster with battle and with 45. 100 attack, it's obviously going to destroy opponent's monster by battle. It can make a second attack. So basically, if your opponent has a thousand, um, 8,000 life points, attack 4,000. Gains a second effect, attack again 2,000. So basically, it can easily um, set your opponent up to lose the duel or you know the whole do time rule thing. And basically, any effect damage you take, your opponent um, inflict the same damage to your opponent. So basically, you could easily go for game. With this card if you have the right setup for the level seven uh synchro play you run the black Rose dragon just to get rid of just to um get rid of the field and go out from there castell detach the material shuffle a card get, shuffle a monster uh, target a monster your opponent controls and just shuffle it back into the deck next number 70 basically what i like about this card is you can detach the material target a monster your opponent controls and banish it until your opponent's next standby phase uh, next exit time night if you're more if your opponent controls more more, uh, more cards than you do and in their hand as well you can basically blow up the field except itself tornado dragon just pop a spell and chop your opponent controls utopia package and for links, if you want, I threw in an o'clock taker to lower any mo any um, of your opponent's monsters attack in case it's too high to get over for some reason. And a deco talker, because honestly, why not? If you're able to get into, the, if you're able to link up into this guy and just uh, boost his attack, depending on the number of monsters it's pointing to. But other than that, that's basically it for the... Um, for the extra right, so there are actually two cards I want to talk about before I end the video, and those two being Thunder Dragon Duo and Danger um, Thunderbird. So let's talk about Danger Thunderbird first. Basically, like mo oh, <laughs> like most um, like most dangers, uh, you know, you make your opponent choose a random card in your hand, and if it's not, you know, that declared card, you can special summon them with these. Basically the same case with Thunderbird, but if it but with this guy, if this one if Thunderbird were discarded, you know, you could just target a set spell or trap your opponent controls, destroy it. So either way, it's like a win-win with this guy. If he is like 10 or 15 bucks, I'm not sure, but overall it's not bad for getting rid of back row. And if you have Monster Reborn, you can just bring it back um, that easy, or it could just be a target for say Black Luster Soldier or Thunder Dragon Duo. Basically, this guy has the same requirement as Black Luster Soldier uh, to summon, you know, a um, dark and light attribute. And basically, um, it is kind of, um, 
If this card destroys a plus monster by battle, you could banish a card from your grave, add a thundered monster from your deck to your hand. It doesn't it doesn't say you can't add itself from <laughs> the deck to your hand, so you could get another banish another dark or light attribute, just get a second duo on the field if you want. But what number one, its final effect is during the end phase. If this card, um, during the end phase, you can target one of your banished cards, place it at the top of your deck. Now, why that's good for Cubix is this deck likes to banish a lot of its spell or traps. So if you're lucky and you tar and you say you know you recycle um, one of your Cubix spells, basically you know put it at the top of your deck, you can either activate you know like for example Cubic Wave, uh, you know one of those Cubic. Um, the cubic card that doubles your monster, perhaps your opponent's monster, you know, just recycle that back to your hand, you know, just do the same thing, you know, um, target the cubic monster you control, double its attack, half your opponent's monster's attack, and just go from there. Plus, if this guy's still on the field, you know, you don't care your, if you don't end your opponent in that turn, you could just hit them with a 28 body right there. But other than that, I think these two cards are actually pretty good to side in cubics if not main them depending on what kind of build you want to go for because these are both level eight and they're easy to stress with someone uh, especially with black Luster soldier i might make a rank eight version i will have to see on that if i can get my hands on more of these cards but other than that i hope you guys enjoyed the deck profile and i'll see you guys in another video